For all we know, Pharaoh could be in heaven. This is not, uh, we're not talking about his eternal salvation. Okay. Okay. So, so I guess my last question is still in Romans 9 and mm -hmm. 21. It says, when a potter makes jars out of clay, does he, doesn't he have a right to use the same lump of clay to make one jar for decoration and another to throw garbage into? In the same way, even though God has a right to show his anger and his power, he is very patient with those on whom his anger falls, who are destined for destruction. Yes. Now, is this a passage about Pharaoh's eternal destiny? No. Uh, it, it begins, it talks about Jacob and Esau and right. Pharaoh and... My, what, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is this is not a passage about Pharaoh's eternal destiny. This is a passage about God using Pharaoh for his purposes here on earth. And when it says he hardened Pharaoh's heart, if you look at the sequence of hardening, who's, who, who hardened the heart first? Pharaoh did, and God completed the process, which is exactly what Paul says in Romans chapter 1, that when we suppress the truth, if we do that long enough, God gives us up to our own desires and completes the process. So this is no different than Romans 1 in my view. For all we know, Pharaoh could be in heaven. This is not, uh, we're not talking about his eternal salvation. We're talking about the fact that he was used by God to achieve a purpose of getting the Israelites out of bondage uh, from Egypt. And God can use that person for that reason. It's up to him, and he did. But I don't think it's saying anything about whether or not Pharaoh's in heaven. That's not the point of the passage.